Around the long coastline of Britain, a quiet war is being waged that's vital to all of us. A peacetime battle of the beaches against pollution by oil. With more oil supplies from abroad has come a new hazard to wildlife. With more ships burning oil in place of coal, a sticky menace comes from the sea around us. For all too much of this oil gets poured in the ocean to ruin holiday beaches and to bring death to hundreds of thousands of seabirds every year. Gulls, puffins, guillemots, razorbills, all are trapped in the treacly ooze that glues their feathers together and prevents them flying. They face, most of them, a lingering death. Some die through swallowing the oil as they try to clean it off. Birds caught up in oil patches far out at sea have little chance. They must swim ashore to live, and few make it. Here's a lucky one, caught by one of the coastal patrols of RSPCA inspectors and volunteers who are always on the lookout for oil-stranded birds. Yet for all the long hours put in by bird lovers living near the sea, only a tiny proportion of these birds are ever found alive. And for some, like this dying swan, help comes too late. Survival means long and patient treatment, first with this special powder that soaks up the oil from the feathers. Later, it's washed out with warm, soapy water, and the bird is slowly nursed back to health. The problem is that the cleaning also takes the natural oil out of the bird's feathers, depriving it of its normal buoyancy. If returned to the water too soon, the bird will sink. So days and weeks of captive convalescence now face it. For this one, the worst is over. But for the rest, the danger remains. In a losing battle against the oil from a thousand ships, Men have tried everything from bulldozers to plain elbow grease. Today is the scientist's turn. Here in this government laboratory of the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, they've tried and tested dozens of chemical removers, including some made in the first place for cleaning garage floors or paintbrushes. In this tank, simulating a beach, one experiment has followed another to find the best way of breaking up oil deposits completely and forever. You've got to disperse the oil on the water into very fine droplets. And here's a chemical that does it, working on the oil just like a detergent on greasy breakfast plates. Away goes the oil, washed clear as it would be by the tide, and the chemical prevents the fine droplets coming together in large lumps again. And now we have a clean beach safe for holiday makers and birds alike. The tide will do the rest, taking away the finely dispersed oil. Scientists know that the sea itself can help in the final destruction, because for thousands of years it has been absorbing natural seepages of oil. But one of the penalties of oil age progress is that we're up against unusually large seepages, sometimes from wrecks like this one off Cornwall. Coastal resorts know to their cost that a single ship pumping out oil 20 miles offshore can soon foul miles and miles of beach. Here, local workers tackle an oil invasion with a chemical remover already tried out in the laboratory. Another way to protect birds and beaches from this kind of danger is to locate the oil patches before they cause any trouble and attack them before they drift inshore. The idea is to spray them with a powder that will absorb the oil, break it up into tiny particles and increase its weight so that it sinks to the seabed just as in this demonstration. It forms a hard rock-like substance and goes down to the bottom of the test tank. At the very heart of the pollution problem is the oil tanker, 
and the more responsible owners now make sure that their ships don't wash out their tanks within sea areas protected by international agreement. At this oil refinery near Southampton, more than a million pounds has been spent on ways of preventing oil from getting into the sea. With more than 15 and a half million gallons of oil and oil products passing through this one port every day, the control job is enormous. As soon as a tanker berths, its scuppers are sealed to prevent oily water running off the deck. But there's the problem of washing out its tanks between cargoes and of pumping oily salt water out of the ballast tanks. If oil is accidentally spilled outside the dock area, there's a high-speed launch ready to deal with it, manned by a team trained specially for such emergencies. They're equipped with chemical removers and a spill boom. With this tough, inflatable tube, they can quickly enclose the oil, which is later sucked aboard a barge and removed. Any oil outside the boom is dispersed with chemicals. But what about all that oily water from the tanker's washings and ballast tanks? And from the refinery's cooling system, which uses 100,000 gallons of seawater a minute? Before it's returned to the Solent, it passes through these separators, which skim off the oil and return it to storage. Only the seawater goes out, and any traces of oil still remaining soon disappear. This man is one of 26, whose full-time job is to see the pollution control works properly. Here, at another oil refinery at South End, similar care is taken to avoid oil pollution. But not until every oil loading port in the world has cleaning processes as effective as this, and not until every tanker owner and ship's captain stops making troubled waters by pouring oil on the ocean, will the cleanup be complete. Meanwhile, the attack goes on, even from the air with oil sinking powder. More than a dozen nations, led by Britain, have agreed to stop their ships discharging oil in coastal waters. Other countries are joining in. But with some of the world's main tanker fleets still outside the agreement, the danger to birds and beaches can lurk on every tide. 